Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Okay. Now, before you attack Does anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello everyone, my name is DJ, this is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and we are continuing our coverage of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. This time we're going to take a look at some interesting cards from the set, and find out how they might impact your existing commander decks. Some new cards make old ones even better, and that's what we're looking at today. Let's start off with an infinite combo. Swift Reconfiguration might look like a removal spell, and it could be, but when you pair it with your own Devoted Druid, you get infinite green mana. See, Devoted Druid can add a green mana to your mana pool, but then you add a minus one minus one counter onto it to untap Devoted Druid. But Swift Reconfiguration turns it into a vehicle, and as a vehicle that's not crude, it's not a creature, so it can hold as many minus one minus one counters as it wants. This can just generate you infinite mana. And so Swift Reconfiguration ends up being an amazing card, allowing you to interact cheaply, but also combo off together. It just makes Devoted Druid even better in your decks. Another archetype that got better is Legendary Matters, like Kethis the Hidden Hand. Kamigawa is packed full of legendaries. Not only does it have powerful, interesting creatures, I think that the legendary lands are a big thing too. You know, allowing you to have that mana base that comes in untapped that you can pitch into your graveyard, that enables Kethis really well. Those lands that I mentioned, the channel lands, are so powerful, they're gonna pump up every deck because they're basically just replacing basic lands. But they also work really well with land-based strategies. I mean, when you channel them away and you have a Gitrog monster out, you're drawing a card and getting that ability. If you have Mina and Den, you can bounce these lands back to your hand and use them as spells later in the game. Like, there's so many different ways to leverage these lands, it's amazing. I also think that equipment decks get way better. Yes, because this has a bunch of great equipments, but I'm specifically looking at Stoneforge Mystic. As they create more and more flexible pieces of equipment, like Lion Sash. Lion Sash is one in a white for a 1-1 one, one artifact creature equipment cat. White, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a permanent card, put a plus one plus one counter on Lion Sash. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each plus one plus one counter on Lion Sash. And it has reconfigure two. As Wizards of the Coast prints more and more flexible, relevant pieces of equipment that work at all phases in the game, well then Stoneforge Mystic becomes a tutor for your equipment toolbox strategy, because then you have an equipment-based answer to everything, and we're getting there with cards like Lion Sash. I also really like the legendary dragons and their powerful death triggers. You know, these bodies on their own might not be enough to make them really attractive in Commander, but these death triggers are amazing, especially when we combine them with cards like Tesa Karloff, that's the most popular Orzhov commander out there. Tesa doubles these triggers up, but it's not the only card that can use these dragons. Think of Arushi the Blazing Sky. I would slam this in a Korvald deck. Korvald loves treasures, and when this dies, it creates three treasure tokens. I'm also a big fan of Mirror Box. Not only is this a boon for many crazy zany decks out there with people doing I don't know what, but this becomes really popular with Rat Colony decks. And there are thousands of people out there playing tons of Rat Colonies, and they're gonna slam Mirror Box into it because it's a crazy coat of arms anthem effect and it's amazing. It also synergizes with Tansunari Toad Rider. If the legend rule doesn't apply, then you can create more than one Kami token with every enchantment you cast. And then every other enchantment you cast is gonna drain everyone, well, exponentially, and it just accelerates the game plan like crazy. And finally, we have one of my favorite cards, not in the main set, not in the commander decks, but Ruthless Technomancer is direct to commander. Three and a black for a 2-4 human wizard. When Ruthless Technomancer enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature you control. If you do, create a number of treasure tokens equal to that creature's power. Two and a black, sacrifice X artifacts, return target creature card with power X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. X can't be zero. When people see a creature that enters the battlefield and creates treasure, they think Dockside Extortionist. Now I know this isn't Dockside Extortionist because Dockside Extortionist is insane and insanely expensive. It doesn't mean that this card isn't powerful and can't serve a really important purpose. 
It's a sacrifice outlet, so remember those Aristocrats decks, those dragons we want to die, this could be perfect for it. Remember that Corvold deck I was referencing? Yeah, remember any token-based deck or treasure deck. I think the card that this synergizes best with is Marionette Master. It's one of my favorite ways to weaponize artifacts, and Ruthless Technomancer goes perfectly with it. Four black black for a 1-3 human artificer with Fabricate 3. Whenever an artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to Marriott Master's power. This is a one-powered creature, which means that you can easily get it back from the graveyard with the Technomancer. Treasures also synergize perfectly with Marionette Master. Also, if the Master's already on the field, the Technomancer becomes a sacrifice outlet, which is what you need to drain people out. Of course, there's a ton of different high mana cost but low powered impactful creatures that you can bring back from the graveyard. Sticking with the artifact theme, we have Pentavis and Triskillian. If we want to stick with the theme of generating mana out of nowhere, we have Crick, Son of Yawgmouth. And we have the clunky combo-tastic workhorse with water balloon abs, workhorse. Six mana for a zero zero, enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it, remove a plus one plus one counter from workhorse, add a colorless mana. Yeah, this is a fun one. Actually, all of these are fun ones. Let me know in the comments down below what other cool synergies and old decks have been powered up by Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Thanks for joining me, and I also want to thank my sponsor, Cool Stuff Inc. They sponsor the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel every single day, and if you go there and get your Kamigawa Neon Dynasty cards and use the coupon code JUMBO5, you can save 5% off your order. I also want to thank my patrons. They support me every day. Thank you, patrons. If you like my videos, click on things and engage. I don't know. There's other videos all around me right here. Otherwise, have a great one. Bye, everyone.